Hello guys and welcome to this channel. In this video, you will have a lot to learn, especially Christians who attend church meetings. So in the video, I will be showing you a pastor making a confession that he had been sacrificing six church members every single year for 10 good years. And also that he was initiated into this court by an archbishop. Now, minor, the condition that he gave me was very simple. Uh, I was told that uh, for this 10 years contract, I would be given six souls, six lives from my congregation. And that is when it hit me. Six people per year. Per year or per 10 years? Per year. Per year. One single year. So meaning, if it is a contract of 10 years, those are 60 people? Yes. This video will start with a blogger interviewing this pastor while he makes his confession. And in between, I will also chip in my comments and my own opinion. Thank you as you watch. All what he has told me is what is written there. All I needed was to sign. And so, he reached for a pen. So, he went for a pen from his pocket, from his shirt pocket. Now, can you put your pen? So, and he gave me this pen. And this pen was this one that you press the button on the top. And so, I was now pressing this button. And so, I pressed the button. This button that I pressed, have you seen this, this gadget that the, the doctors use when, when they are testing you for, for maybe on, for your blood? Oh, it's like, like a needle. Uh, for blood glucose yeah. level. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, thing, that pen had that needle. So when I pressed, it actually pinched me. And so there, there, was, a, uh, there was a drop of blood. You can imagine the level of fear I was at that particular point. Now that I'm even seeing my own blood, and now he told me that blood, you just, you just uh, squeeze the finger, let the blood drop on the area that you are trying to sign, and then you will use now the, now the pen to use that blood as the ink. And, and so I tried. Actually, that signature was wasn't so good, but the blood was there and it was mine. So they needed your blood. Yeah, and that part they didn't even told me. They didn't even tell me it was about you now the blood. I just I just got a, a pen. But the level of fear that I was, I couldn't ask questions at that particular moment. I have accepted this, and now I'm signing the contract. And now when I signed the contract, now this is where he gave me now the I can call it the, the worst news I ever received on that day. He told me that to show, to show that I was willing and I'm doing this for my own likeness and willingness, what can I do to prove to them or who can I, who, what am I ready to do? And I told them, anything, whatever you ask for, I'll do. And so he said, can you sacrifice anyone closest to you? Now that is where now it hit me again. I've already signed this contract and now they're asking me if I can sacrifice anyone close to me. And I asked, what do you mean close to me? I thought you said it was six people per year that, from, that are from my congregation that are not close to me. They are just members. And he said, for the, for the, for the starting, you have to give someone just a single soul for a span of 10 years, just one that is close to you. And so I sat and thought to myself, he said, do you have a brother or a sister? And I said, yes, I have a brother and a sister. He said, now it's, it's you to choose. Who do you want? That was a hard decision, man. But to cut the long story short, 
I choose to my brother. I give away my brother. And he told me that was it. I don't have to worry any, about anything. I don't have to do anything. I just sit down, sit back and watch. He took the, the contract, put it in his drawer and then an envelope came out and he put it on the table and he told me that there is something in there that I want you to look. So I opened the envelope and checked. What I saw was a ring and just nothing else. It was just a ring. It was a ring with a with a blue blue like blue like what gem. So I took it. And so it was a ring. Nobody needs to, to explain to you what a ring is supposed to. So I, I took it and and I looked at him. I could see him suggesting I should wear it, and then I, I just wore it without even him telling me. And then he told me that that ring should never come on come off my finger. I should always stay with that ring and even if I take it off, then maybe remember to take it back. I should just do that. Even go back home and just take it back. What, 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 why the ring? This ring, that this ring is, is what holds my church. It's the power that will be calling these followers. This is the ring that will be showing the power that I have. It is the ring that actually contains the power that they are granting me. So if I take it off, I don't have that power. And so I knew right there, right then, I was in. And I was in the, in the, in the, in the powerful league. And so I had to accept this. I am already in. I'm not now panicking or anything. I'm now, I'm, I'm now actually feeling very brave. And your wife, did she see the ring? She saw it. She saw the ring. And she asked me, I have, where have I started wearing a ring? I told her I liked it. It was actually quite fancy. It was not a, a ring that you could, you, you could, uh, think it was about things that maybe are bad or, or anything or, or anything like that. It was a fancy ring. It, it looked like a, a stylish ring. So I told her I, I bought that ring. I thought it was nice. I like rings. Maybe she didn't know. I just tried creating a joke on top of it. We actually laughed about it. And she said it was nice. It was beautiful and everything. She actually accepted it. It was like it was even controlling her emotions or anything because she just accepted it. And so the ring was never a problem with my life. It, it never arose any questions or anything. It was part of me. So it was now, now I went back to work, preaching the gospel and trust me, within, now it was just one month after we met, my brother had an accident. He had an accident and it was actually a very painful accident because he did not die on the spot. We had to take him to the hospital, and he died on the on, on, on the on the on the sick bed. So, how did that how did that make you feel? Because I'm sure you knew you were you yeah. accepted. Yes, I did. I knew. I, I knew. I knew I was the cause. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, at the hospital, I was. In my head, I was thinking, why didn't he just die? Why am I, why am I seeing this? And it actually gave me some anger issues. I actually had some anger issues at that period because it was actually affecting me very badly. But then he passed away. And when he passed away, these archbishops and other friends actually came and joined us in the church. They helped in preparing his burial and everything, and we buried him very nicely. He, it was a respectable burial, but it was quite painful, knowing that I was the cause of his death. 
but I had to to keep it real with myself and maintain what I signed, maintain the contract. So this is the year 2012? This is the year 2012. That was my first year. That is now when I have joined the cult. Now, you, you said you were told that uh, six people will die in every year. Uh, your brother was the first one to die. Yeah. Did now the other five, or oh, it was not happening at once? No, uh -huh. it wasn't happening at once. And the church grew, and just like you know, I had the ring. So I would perform a lot of deliverances, and people would see that this was real and everything, and I would attract a lot of followers. And just remember, it's been 10 years now. So the, the sacrifice was six, six people, six souls every one year. And it actually didn't happen because it was not, you couldn't even notice it because it happened in very distinct ways. Because you could see like maybe something just happens, uh, a pregnant woman loses her child, and, or maybe the mother and the child also dies. And people think it is and, a normal thing. And people just think it's a normal thing. But remember, when a pregnant woman dies, that's two people. You see? If that uh, child, unborn child dies, that's one person. But it would just, the, if you just did all your maths really well, in every one year, it is sound to six. And I can assure you that for the past 10, yeah, 10 years, we have lost uh, 60. 60 souls, children, old people, some people would even die out of natural causes like uh, he, she, she or he had uh, an existing illness and she, she, just, she just or he, he just dies and he is actually a member or she is a member in my church and I would know, I knew that that was a sacrifice and for that uh, long period, that 10 contract that 10-year contract, uh, they never asked me for anything else, just what we talked about in that first meeting. And everything went well, the church grew. Now, right now, I can assure you that I have almost 3,000 members in my church, which are very, most of them are very wealthy people who really just come out there to help the church grow, building the church and everything. I'm driving a good car that I never took, not even a penny from my pocket to buy. It all just came just like that. From my members, from all the support that I was receiving, but deep down there, I know what I did. And your wife, the transition, did she even think about it? It's been, it's been a gradual change, yes. It's rapid, but it was gradual in this manner. Everyone's mind was adapted to what was happening, especially my wife, who was closest to me. Maybe because we have a covenant. Right now we are one, because we were married. So she, she came to grew, she, she grew with the idea and everything happened like it was normal. She never became a problem to me. She never had any questions or anything. She's, she's been gradually growing with me accepting what is happening and actually celebrating what is happening and actually actually saying that this is what we wanted and it's actually happening this is what we were playing for and it's happening and right now she's still in the dark she has never known anything i'm the only one who does know and right now when i decided to come to you minor it's it's not easy because something has happened, something big. Uh, as you know, it was a 10-year contract. It ended last year. And now we had a meeting. Actually, the last meeting I have attended with these people. And in this meeting, Wakaniyabi and now I have to graduate and go to the next level like the others. Now what they were telling me about the leaders in those groups, now I can graduate and become a leader and start also fetching followers. It was a good idea, like the idea, I, I was into it. But then there was a condition. Do you remember the first condition they gave me 10 years ago? No, this one they did not let me sign the contract. They 
they actually have to even before I sign the contract. So this is what they wanted. They wanted my, my mother and my firstborn son. Right now we've already had other two children. I have a, a daughter and another son. The son is the last born, so the daughter Nia So I did not I did not agree to that one. Now that is where I crossed the line. Why why would they ask for your mom and your son? No, they are saying that I need now to be closer to their covenant than I am because they are making me a leader. That did not sit well with me, and so we did not get, we did not get into conclusion with that one. Actually, we, we, we almost we were shouting at each other in that office, and I actually left that office without, without coming into conclusion on that decision. But in my heart, I knew I was not going to sacrifice my, my, my son or my wife. And I actually even give them an ultimatum. I told them if that's what they want, then they can just take my life or anything. But all I know is they told me there was nothing. I had no choice on it. It is decided. It's been 10 years now. I can't live in the middle of this. It's happening and that is what is going to happen. I have no say in it. And right now as we speak, Kamuhunchia, my son is no more. Back in October last year, that's when my son died. They were with the grandmother and heading, heading to Moranga. I had given them my driver to get them there. They, they, they had some, I don't know what the grandmother wanted to go and show my son out there. And so they had an accident and my son was in that car, my mother and the driver. My mother and my son died on the spot, but the driver not even a scratch. My mom. These things, uh, they are planned and they go the way they want. Not even a scratch. And that is when now my heart broke and that is when I broke. I couldn't do anything. Sorry. So guys, can you hear that? He said his heart broke. This is a man that has been sacrificing, more like a monster to me, that has been sacrificing six human beings every single year from his church. And his heart did not break along the line. But when, in addition to his brother that was killed, his mom and his son died, were killed, his heart broke. Can you imagine the depth of wickedness? The depth of the monstrous um heart anyway guys that's just my own little input so there is a part two of this please watch out for it so guys there's a lot to learn and the sad thing is also was that this guy also conducts deliverances for people so when he does that what does he kick out of their life so that is actually when he gets a chance to put to, to i mean to pick his um victims for the year it's so sad these are innocent people that thought they were going to meet somebody who will make life better for them. So guys, there's a lot of lessons to learn in this video. Please take time to watch it again. Please take what you can learn out of this and be careful. Most of all, make sure you pray for yourself. Don't depend on anyone, even pastors, to be the one you run to at every point in time. And also seek the face of God, meaning ask God, God, is this a man, is this pastor truly a man of God? Is he truly your servant? Before you start to commit your life into such people's life. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And also watch out for part two. Bye for now. Thank you.